What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. We are coming at you from the outside world. <laughs> coming at you. Coming at you. Yeah, get ready. It is nice and warm and toasty. But we thought we could do just oh, a little chit chat video today. So we've got a topic that we wanted to talk about yep. and um, yeah we're just gonna kind of throw this out there for y'all. So we get a lot of questions on how to start this lifestyle. Tons of questions. And so we just, we thought we could kind of go about our thought process from our experiences, our, our suggestions to you guys, any of you guys that are interested in the RV lifestyle or wanting to get into it and don't know what to do. Right. And so it's actually pretty simple. Um, so this, I guess, really business, you know, it's like uh, RVs are a business to, to some. Uh, it's very cyclical. So a lot of people do want to see more of, of these types of videos going into like January, the new year, pretty mm -hmm. much. And so they always ask questions like, you know, what should I start with? Um, should I go class C? Or like, what was your reasoning behind getting, uh, you know, the pull behind rather than like an actual class C, like motor driven, uh, you know, RV. Um, and so we always explain the differences between them and the reason for like for us to do that specifically, uh, it was just pricing price points. Plus we also got a truck to pull it. So it's, um, yeah, it's kind of made sense for us at that time. Uh, and we went to an RV show. So that's to buy new. Um, a lot of people do end up buying new. In fact, uh, sales for RVs are like all time high. I'm pretty sure uh, it's all that millennials are driving the industry for RVs and recliners. So there you go. Recliners. Yeah, I saw that actually just well, a couple they days put ago. Recliners in their RVs. No, it's not even RV related. I don't know. So furniture is actually at all time high. Same with uh, furniture and RVs. Furniture and RVs. Yeah. So that's uh, that is us, I guess. We're millennials that buy RVs. We're technically millennials. I don't know what we are. We're youngish, but either way, yeah. So we like the whole pull behind um, aspect of it. Uh, we wanted to make, be sure of like certain aspects of it, which I guess is that's what we'll actually get into. Uh, so things to be sure of, at least on the travel trailer side. Again, we don't really know the whole class C or A or technically B either, really, because we were going to start with B but moved away again. So this, uh, this is a, a class trailer. Uh, right here behind us, and uh, class trailer, a class trailer. So it's a it's a trailer. It's a travel trailer. Uh, so everyone told us, you know, get at least two axles. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just a safety aspect of it. And say you lose one tire uh, in transit, it just goes away from you. Uh, you still have another tire on that same side to help support you while you're pulling over, you know, uh, safely. Um, same goes with, you know, I guess larger trailers. You would probably want to move up to potentially three axles, uh, things like that. It also just supports the weight. Um, you also make, make sure you have a good chassis on that too as well, stuff like that. Yeah, so whenever you're actually looking for an RV, uh, a good aspect is new. Uh, you get warranties and things like that. I think we bought into a seven year warranty. Uh, of course, we did have to buy into that. It was like mm -hmm. an added feature. Um, and I'd suggest it, but look it over. Uh, see what you're actually getting for it. Uh, we got a mattress and seven year warranty with this thing, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, the That's things that are important to us, right? <laughs> and so uh, it really just comes down to what is important to you. Um, if you feel comfortable, like just getting, you know, RV insurance and then just hoping for the best or working on your own, you know, units or whatever it might be and replacing them yourself, if, if worst case scenario. Uh, and a lot of things are covered for at least a small period of time, at least I think two years for, for many of the items inside the RV, uh, and including I think even the TV for a lot of, a lot of uh, resellers. Um, and so new is nice. But the thing is, I think you can do certain things like that even with the used um, aspect of it. So there's consignment and then there's also used resellers. Um, and so, so just research both. I would say just research Check both. Check out both and find out which one. Okay, so we had to change locations. <laughs> there's somebody table, like with a table saw outside. So. Yeah. Okay, so we were on newer used RVs. Yeah, so basically just do your research, look at things that you want. I mean, if you want an island in your RV, you can have it. And so just. Just make a Crazy. note, like just notate everything. In fact, I would suggest going to an RV show, seeing what is out there now, what is possible. Uh, of course, RV shows, there's always that new thing. Like uh, this last one that we went to compared to the one before that, the new thing seemed to be like electronic leveling uh, kits or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Yeah. Which would be um, really nice. Yeah, it would be nice, but like I did also see an increase of like two to $5,000 on each price tag. Uh, for a lot of the same trailers that we had with the same you know, layout and everything. So really just, again, do your research. Um, maybe a model year older is actually what was perfect for you. Uh, and it might have been perfect for us, but we really just, uh, we saw what we wanted. We were there at the RV show. We put mm -hmm. the money down and just went for it. Uh, we're kind of impulsive. Uh, I would not exactly suggest that. 
Um, that's just the way that we roll. Um, and <laughs> Maybe so, some of you guys are. Maybe that's what yeah. works for you. But it's fun. I think one of the biggest things that helped us and has helped us continuously to this day is YouTube. So look up YouTubers that do this. Look up, learn from different people, learn from people that have class C's, learn from people that live in vans, live, learn from people that have, you know, fifth wheels. Um, do a lot of research and look up videos on the good and the bad side of this lifestyle because, I mean, it's, it's great, but there is a lot of give and take. There is. Um, there, because, put it that way. I mean, there's a lot of things that you wouldn't think about, um, and a lot of YouTubers out there talk about it, which is very, very helpful. So do a lot of research. Um, we Once we decided that we wanted to do this, we started looking up YouTubers, like, at least I did. Yeah. But again, <laughs> we started looking them up. <laughs> we kind of stopped at, like, oh, yeah, we want that lifestyle. We want to just jump in and go somewhere. And so that's why we were going, or leaning towards the Class C. Of course, then someone showed us this trailer, uh, showed us how strong the paneling was and how cheap the, the monthly fee was, you know, to pay, like, because we, of course, do it on a monthly basis. Um, that's really attractive, but I would say go a little bit further and actually research into the individual, like, trailers themselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of these shows are multiple days, and so I would suggest maybe going on an early day and then doing Get research on the ones that you stuff. like and then coming back. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's gonna cost an extra $10, but it'll be worth it because you'll know what you want. An island and a fireplace are great, but make sure there's no uh, you know leaks as far as air goes. Uh, so we actually, on this trailer that we have now, we have a little uh, hole that leads out right behind some of our cabinets in the kitchen uh, where air is just, I'll say cold air is just kind of seeping out. Of course, hot air in the, in the winter, yeah. but either way. <laughs> so uh, it takes a little bit more to, like, we have to run the AC a bit more, we have to run the heater a bit more. Um, it's just, it's kind of troublesome. And so we've done some things to try to prevent it, but rather instead of just doing that, doing prevention, uh, why don't you just do the ultimate prevention and not get, like, or you actually look into it where, you make sure you can't see out of your trailer from the inside once it's closed, right? You know, things like that, little simple things. you might learn that after. Well, yeah, if, if it's something like that, well, this is actually a design feature down here. Mm -hmm. So it's a design flaw, technically. So just make sure there's no, I guess, design flaws. I think another thing to be aware of is that you don't just, you aren't just going to buy your trailer and buy your RV and be done with it. There's a lot of other purchases and things that you have to have in your possession to help you actually live the lifestyle. We actually did a video on it um, a couple months after we got our trailer because we thought we were going to be done. You know, you get the RV and you're like, all right, let's go. Well, come to find you need this, 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 so many other things to add on to your rig um, to help you actually be able to be mobile and Function do on a daily basis, really. Like the black tank and electric plugs yeah. and water hoses. Surge protector hoses, and, yeah. <laughs> drinking hoses specifically. They don't yeah. give you those all the time. They give you little so, short ones. But I'll link that video below uh, yeah. so you guys can check it out because that was... And there are a few things that looking back, um, they're not completely necessary, but it's just we have a whole list in the, in the uh, description of that video yeah. that might be helpful to some of you guys. And yeah, I mean, it's going to be an initial cost. Um, even after getting the RV, you're going to need some extra change here and there um, to add on to your whole system. Uh, so that's something that I think is important to know because, again, I just thought that we would get in it and be like, all right, let's go. It's going to be fun. And yeah. we're like, oh, wait, no, we need power and water. And Especially if you're looking into boondocking because boondocking is a whole nother mm -hmm. beast. Uh, that's whenever you start getting into solar, you start getting into traveling with extra water with you. Uh, I mean, you really have to think ahead with that one. And then uh, an inverter would be nice instead of a generator. Generators are just loud. So if you're trying to be in this peaceful environment out in the wilderness where no one can find you, well, that's not going to be the case because your generators will be running right behind you. Mm. Uh, the inverter is a little bit uh, quieter from what I've heard. We don't have one yet, but we're also not boondocking quite yet. Again, it's a whole other beast. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think another one would be to understand, um, I mean, if you're going to be full-timing, which I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people that are going to watch this video are interested in full-timing, you do have to understand that it's a big lifestyle change. Like, big time. <laughs> um, start, like everything. Start thinking about, if you do want to downsize, start thinking about the items that are necessities, because those are basically going to be all that you can have here. Um, and a good way to think about that is actually things that you haven't used in six months. That's really particular to the kitchen and the closet, uh, but you can say that about several other things in your life. Uh, so if it's like you have this car washing kit, but you keep ended up taking your car just to the car wash, 
It's like, just get rid of it. Yeah. You don't need it. Um, clothes, for sure. It's mm -hmm. like, well, I mean, besides, you know, seasonal things. But even if there's seasonal things that you haven't used in at least a year, then that probably should go, too. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can actually cut down probably all the way down to less than a third of what you have pretty easily just based off of that. And that's on a, you know, probably an average basis. Everyone that we've kind of talked to, they all say the same thing. Like, yeah, I could do that. But what if I need it? Yeah. <laughs> so there's always just just get rid of yeah. that last question and you'll be good. Yeah. Um, decorative items and things like that. There's not a whole lot of space to decorate in an RV. Um, so various knickknacks throughout the house. So just understand that there's going to be a lot of change. And for a lot of people, that's there's going to be a very difficult transition period. And there Personality is a, way... a. This guy yeah. is good with whatever. He's good with anything. Um, but as for myself, change is a bit harder for me to adjust to. So just start kind of preparing yourself mentally um, for the changes that are going to happen because you're going to be in a lot tighter of a space. So make sure you guys spend time apart if you need it. Figure out ways to to work through any issues. You know, if you have, if you need your space, make sure to take time and find some space uh, if you need to go outside. And that's part of one of the things that I like about this lifestyle is when we're traveling, it forces you to get outside more often because yeah. there isn't a whole lot of space. And when we have the dogs, we need to get outside. And so being in such a small area, we can't just sit around all day. Like you want to get outside. And that's one of the beauties of this. But again, it takes some adjusting. So just be aware of that. And there's again, a lot of YouTube videos that you guys can look up on tips on how to minimize um, and how to adjust to a, a tiny home lifestyle. That's basically what this is. And you did touch on a point with the uh, pushing yourself out a bit more with this lifestyle because obviously you want to be out of this space at some point. You can't live Especially in a tiny area all the time. As dirty as ours is right now. Well, yeah, we're about to do a cleaning video, so let's not talk about that right now. Um, but yeah, so there's some days where the weather's just bad and you can't go outside and you're stuck inside for, literally, we were stuck inside for days at a time, mm -hmm. um, you know, only going out for necessities, uh, and that's if we can even get out, because mm -hmm. uh, there's like kind of flooding and things like that. Uh, things like that may happen, and you are going to have to work through stuff like that. So get mentally prepared for that. It's mm -hmm. not often, maybe once, twice a year, if that, depending on where you are. If you've so. got kids, think of some fun games that you guys can do, or have fun like make like, bake a bunch of stuff and then you just eat all the food it's always fun this is what you want to do right now it is yeah <laughs> is there anything else you can think of there probably is transportation but... is another yeah. thing having because if you're going to be in a class a or class c you don't want to take your rv everywhere whenever you go to a certain spot so having a lot of people have like a little town car or a go car or mopeds or Vespas. something um, that they tow along with them so that whenever you do hook up at a campsite you don't have to unhook and take your class a everywhere you take the smaller car or the mopeds or whatever it is um, for us it's our truck which is one thing that we liked about getting the trailer yeah. is we can set our home down we unhook and then we take the truck um, so having a mode of transportation outside of just the trailer or your rv is quite essential. Yeah, and overall the truck and trailer aspect is usually less expensive than the actual like Class C or up, uh, plus the what they call a dinghy, which is what they pull behind them. Uh, that little car or whatever it might be. <laughs> and so, yeah. And also those things are only rated for so much. I think uh, Class C's are usually, like the smaller Class C's are 5,000 pounds, so you have to get a car that's, well, you know, pretty under, pretty much under that. Teeny tiny. So yeah, pretty tiny. So just a lot of things to think about on that side. Um, obviously there's probably going to be a lot of questions after this video and we can try to help yeah if you guys do have any questions if any of y'all are looking into this lifestyle and you're like what the heck leave some questions below um i'm sure a lot of our viewers would be more than happy to answer them but i also apparently you guys really like the q a videos the last one that we did was it was a favorite Ooh. um a lot of people really enjoyed it so we'd be more than happy to do more so leave your questions in the comments below and i'll write them down for a future q a but if y'all did enjoy it make sure and hit that thumbs up we always ask it helps other people find the videos it lets us know if you're actually enjoying the content and it helps the channel grow and if you're just now finding us make sure and subscribe we travel sometimes sometimes we don't we hang out with our dogs in the rv and we do fun stuff. I so like to swim. That's our channel. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much the channel. It's just kind of a, a whatever kind of channel. But uh, there is an overall theme of travel and RVs. So but I, that's going to be it for today's video. It. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We look forward to the next one. It's going to be cleaning. Deep cleaning. Yep. Yep. <sighs> it's much needed. Yeah. Um, but you guys can see how we clean the RV. Yeah, don't just, look now. I mean, yeah. it's not done yet. Yeah. So, but uh, that'll okay. be coming hopefully Thursday. Yep. 
All right. Well, y'all have fun out there. Bye. <laughs> Does this not go any higher? Is it okay if it cuts off like right here? You're wearing your sunglasses? Yeah. I feel like it's weird. Like when you wear sunglasses in a video, you look like you're trying to look cool. No, this is me being genuine. I know, but it's bright and it hurts my eyes. Right, that's why I'm wearing sunglasses. So then I look like this the whole time. It's out, we're outside. All right, I might switch these. So I'm gonna, I don't, I'm gonna start okay. here. Okay. What is that? Look at that dragonfly. I think it's trying to eat my leg. Don't grab, do, do. Yeah, what if it does? Come on. Come on. Okay. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's I've never seen a dragonfly it's like, like that. It's like neon green. Yeah. Um, oh. um yeah, no. I'll let that back up. The one time this summer that there's a breeze. I know.